Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. Today we're going to have a look at the Myford Super 7B lathe which I've got on the bench behind me here. I'm going to describe some of the basic features of the machine, what they do and we'll look at some of the accessories that I've got. As you can see this is one of the grey models. Uh, it was built somewhere in the 1970s so it makes it about uh, 35 to 40 years old. The Myford Super 7 is generally considered to be the go-to lathe for model engineering and that's really down to its compact size but its great versatility. So let's have a closer look. So let's make a start up at the business end of the machine. This is the headstock featuring the spindle here. Opening the hatch cover you've got the belt, uh, various pulleys so you can adjust the speed of the spindle. Um, on the left here there are further belts, we'll have another look at that in a second. Uh, the motor at the back of the machine there and on the front the gearbox. This is what the B means in Myford Super 7B so it's a quick change gearbox for screw cutting and for power feeds to the uh, lead screw here. The spindle speed is adjusted by moving the belt over from one pulley to the other. To do that you have to release that lever there which brings the shaft forward, loosens the belt and allows you to transfer it over. Um, always of course making sure that the machine is isolated from the mains and switched off when you do this. So the belt on this side with the small pulley here, the large one at the bottom, uh, that's the slow speed and obviously as you move the belt over to the right you increase the speed of the spindle. Moving around to the left hand side of the machine you've got further pulleys here um, so you can adjust the speed of the spindle further by moving from the small pulley to the large one at the bottom. This is the back gear mechanism here. At the moment the back gear is not engaged so if I rotate the spindle you can see that the cog at the bottom is not rotating. To engage the back gear what you have to do is to pull that lever there and raise that lever which brings the gear into contact uh, and reduces the spindle speed further. The back gear is used when you want a very slow spindle speed for things like either screw cutting or turning a very large diameter piece of work where you want a slow speed but lots of torque through the spindle. This lever up here is the clutch, one of the best features of the Myford lathe in my opinion. It means that you can leave the motor spinning and disengage the spindle far better than turning the motor on and off all the time. Moving around to the left hand end of the machine, just by opening this cover here you expose the various change wheels or change gears. Um, as this is a screw cutting lathe you don't need a range of change wheels but nevertheless there are quite a few gears in here that uh, convert the spindle speed through to the lead screw speed uh, and then the speed at which the carriage moves across the lathe. This lever here is the forward reverse lever so the tumbler gears in here uh, set the forward and reverse direction. This set of gears here, which you change by pulling up that cover and sliding that off, sets the fine feed for either screw cutting or finishing cuts. With the gear cluster in this position it's set for a fine feed. If I pull it off, flip it over and put it back on again, that will set the correct speed for screw cutting. This is the quick change gearbox, a brilliant time saving feature of this particular machine. Saves farting around with change gears which wastes a huge amount of time. Basically um, you set the thread that you want using the combination of this lever at the bottom and this one at the top uh, in accordance with the chart on the top of the gearbox here. The range of threads is between 8 threads per inch and 56 threads per inch. So this mechanism is the carriage. Uh, the cross sliders here which is wound in and out using this hand wheel here. Uh, the carriage has a coarse feed hand wheel here. This lever on the left engages the half nut which moves it under power from right to left. This is the top side that can be angled for cutting tapers. It's locked with this little screw here. This one is fitted with a Dixon quick change tool post which allows for very quick tool changes. Both the cross slide hand wheel and the top slide hand wheel are fitted with these dials here which can be zeroed and these allow you to apply an exact amount of cut to the job in hand. The carriage has a lock here, this thing just comes off but by tightening that up it prevents the carriage from moving along the bed which is what you would need to do if you were doing a facing cut and you didn't want any carriage movement. This is the thread cutting indicator here. It swings forwards to engage with the lead screw um, and the dial on the top rotates and that allows you to set up the lathe properly for screw cutting. Pushing down this lever here engages the carriage feed and you can see that's now moving across under its own power. Now I've just reversed the direction of the lead screw and by pulling out this knob here 
you've got the power cross feed now engaged. Finally onto the tailstock, which is this bit. The tailstock slides along the bed like this. There's a lever at the back, if I just pull up, push that hard, that locks it so it won't move along the bed. The hand wheel here moves the quill in and out, and this lever on top locks the quill. As I mentioned earlier, this is the long bed version of the lathe, and I've just fitted some centres to the headstock and the tailstock, uh, and I've just got out my tape measure, I'm going to measure the distance between centres. This is about as much as you can achieve with this lathe, so that comes in at uh, 73 centimetres, or roughly 29 inches. The Mikeford features a gap bed, which is this gap between the, the ways and the headstock here. That just gives you a little bit more swing, which allows you to turn large diameter discs, such as locomotive wheels or things of that sort. The centre height over the gap is roughly 103 millimetres, or double that to give you the total swing. And above the bed, the centre height is of the order of 9 centimetres, 3.5 inches. The height over the carriage is about 5 or 6 centimetres, so somewhere between 11 and 12 centimetres of swing. The Myford has a threaded spindle nose here. The bore is Morse taper number 2. The threaded spindle nose allows the various chucks and other accessories to be simply screwed on. Uh, which makes it very quick. The disadvantage is that if you're operating the spindle in reverse, which is sometimes a good thing to do, you can find that the accessories unscrew themselves, which is not desperately helpful. This little plate on the side of the headstock shows the spindle speeds with back gear either engaged or disengaged, and this tells us that the spindle speed is between 25 revolutions a minute at the slowest and 2150 at the quickest. Here you can see the cross slide again which has T-slots allowing you to fit a range of accessories or work pieces with T-nuts to the cross slide, a very useful feature. And it's actually a very long cross slide as well, so all the way from here to here, about eight inches long, so good size for a wide range of work and accessories. So let's have a look at some of the standard accessories that I've got for this lathe. Uh, these are what you would expect to see for most lathes. So here on the left, we've got a four-jaw independent Pratt Bernard chuck the diameter of that is 6 inches. Next we have a faceplate, diameter 7 inches. Next is the three jaw chuck with internal jaws fitted and separate external jaws there. Then we've got the catch plate which is used for turning between centres. Then there is the fixed steady. And finally the rear tool post. And moving up to the little cupboard at the back here, on the bottom left we've got a drill chuck that fits to the tailstock or indeed the headstock. Then there's a live centre, a couple of dead centres, drill chucks, and then the chuck key for the four-jaw chuck, the chuck key for the three-jaw, uh, and along the top you've got a range of quick change tool holders. This is how the accessories screw onto the spindle nose. So I've got the faceplate here, and it's simply a case of very carefully sliding it on and rotating it until the screw thread catches and then just screw it up until it's reasonably tight but you don't want to do it too tightly. Here's one of the quick change tool holders. Just have a little look at how that works. It's height adjustable. You simply slide it into place like that and with this Allen key gently tighten it up. This is the rear tool post fitted into place on the cross slide. This one is homemade from a kit from Hemingway Kits. It's actually got two tool positions so by pushing down that plunger Unlocking that and rotating the turret, it can bring into play a second tool, although you'd have to cut off the parting tool here. I've got the lathe set up in its slowest back speed gear here, just to give you a feel for how slow that is. This is what the fixed steady looks like when it's set up on the lathe. So you undo that knob there, and it opens up, shuts again. The fingers are fitted with roller bearings on the end to reduce the rubbing and the friction on the workpiece. Here's how the drill chuck fits into the tailstock. Simply a case of putting it in, you'd knock it with a hammer or something to give it a bit more grip. And then to release it, unwind it, and out it pops. Finally we'll just take a little tour around the machine to point out the lubricating points. So you've got one here, one here for the uh, lay shaft spindle. Um, there's another little lubricating point here, here, here one here, I think there's another one up there somewhere. Moving over to the carriage, here, here, look, couple on the tailstock, 
one on the lead screw hand wheel bearing there's one here and of course you need to keep the ways and all the sort of polished metal surfaces nice and regularly oiled to prevent corrosion so there you have it the myford super 7b screw cutting lathe in future videos i'll look at some of the turning operations on the lathe and get you started with some of the basics if you enjoyed the video and want to see more of the same please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel thank you for watching